Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel is Finding Value. Uh, today, we're gonna work our way through Twitter, see what's going on there, what people are talking about. Uh, it's gonna be commodity, financial related stuff, some real estate stuff, uh, maybe some financial savings, wealth building type information, and I'll interject my financial opinions around it. Uh, so let's dive in, let's take a look, see what people are talking about. And if you wanna follow me, it's at finding underscore finance. Uh, and it's, if you want to join the, the community, it's finding-value.com, discount for the coupon code. So coming on down, Amy says, but they they keep telling us that in the next five years, this group is going to be buying all these clown show million dollar homes that their more financially solvent parents bought for 97000 in 1987. She says the math doesn't work. Well, I know a lot of people that can afford million dollar homes. Um, I don't know that many people that are younger millennials, they're maybe the older millennials, late thirties, early forties. I know a few 20 something year old millennials, uh, but that's always through work and they're not poor. They're engineers that make pretty good money and, uh, have the proclivity to save money. But this stat is 67% of millennials who want to own a home have $0 saved for a down payment. And 18% have less than 10,000. Here are the two big obstacles and how to overcome them. And, and that's what this was going into. So she's saying that um, millennials aren't going to be able to afford these homes. All I'm going to say is, if that was the case, then why is inventory as low as it is? If they cannot afford homes, the inventory would be high and we would be crashing in real estate. Problem is, we are not crashing in real estate. Real estate prices have actually gone up, not down. They are still, I mean, they've gone down from their highs, but they're still going up in the short term here, given the cyclical nature of real estate. So people are buying it even at what are some of the worst affordability in terms of, of history, in terms of pricing and interest rates together. Um, so that's that's my opinions there. Uh, this guy's he's, he's got some good information here. So he says the current secular bull market, which in his view began in 2009, totally agree. Seems like the 1949 to 68 run, totally agree. By that measure, the current market is akin to the mid to late 60s timeline, totally agree. That makes sense from an inflation and a stocks bond correlation analog. I also agree because. The work that I've done with ratios aligns exactly with that time frame. So what he's got here is the secular trends of inflation. This blue line in the bottom here is the inflation 10-year compound annual growth rate. So that's what that is here. And that is overlaid. You can kind of overlay this with the S&P 500 total return in the black line here. When the inflation goes from a low level and turns upward, that means that we get a sideways movement in stocks, a sideways to slightly higher movement. I think that's what's coming next. And if you look at where he puts you are here, we can see that we are inflecting positive uh, for that. That's the five-year correlation stocks to bonds. We can see we inflected positive in the late 60s, mid to late 60s. And, and we're starting uh, also. So there is this relationship that he is looking at that puts us in the late 60s. Um, my analysis if, uh, from ratios puts us in like 1970. So that is very close uh, for the information that we both are looking at. He also states in the stock market having a 60s flashback, Here's a close-up of the 1960s analog using the five-year inflation rate as the indexing factor. If this is correct, it suggests that the current market will recover to modest new nominal highs, but not to the degree that many investors got used to over the past decade and a half. The mid to late 60s was the twilight of that secular bull market, so the analog seems fitting. So we're probably just after the mid-60s. He's saying the late 60s. 
This is him overlaying the S&P 500. The pink is the 1950s to 1960s and then 70s. And this is our 19 or 2008 all the way till where we are today. This is the overlay of it both. And you can see that we kind of roll sideways here all the way till the late 1970s. We can also look at the two at the bottom here, which is inflation. And this is the five-year compound annual growth rate compared to each other from those time frames. And they overlay very well. So if you were to look at this and you were to overlay the data, aka the fractals, we would say, okay, this is playing out very much like the late 1960s. He's got it basically 2022 being 1969, and I've got it being right around 1970. So we're within spitting distance of each other. If this were to repeat, then we would get a repeat of the 1970s. Uh, we've got the same alignments from a ratio perspective of commodities in relationship to stocks. And this is all in alignment in terms of inflation and how the S&P 500 is reacting. Everything's in alignment, guys. And we could fall and it could grab everything lower in the short term <laughs> for a period of time. Very well possible. Uh, but the 1970s, I think, is similar to what we have coming in front of us. We're going to have an energy crisis. We're going to have shortage of commodities. And I think it could even be worse than the 1970s, perhaps. Why do I say that? Because the 1970s still had a, I would say, a lot of low-hanging fruit in terms of energy and commodities that could be extracted around the world. The problem was localized to the United States alone in 1970 for peak oil. Now, it's the whole world. And it's going to be amplified because... The money and the rotation of money in the 70s was only in America. This is worldwide now. And it's going to be much more grandiose uh, with everyone participating and with no real, perhaps, out of – there's no easy out of this energy crisis. We are literally going to have to ride through it and grind through it. Uh, and last time, in the 1970s, we could just – well, we could just open, uh, we, we, we could import oil. I don't think we can just import oil from another planet as easily. That's my opinions around that. Um, so we might have to get a little bit more jiggy with it. We may have to do some more substitutions, a lot more conservation of energy, a lot more efficiency, but efficiency breeds more use, more adoption. Uh, which is kind of a catch-22. But that's where we are cycle-wise, guys. And this guy's got the data, I think, completely correct. So good work uh, to Jurin or Jurin, however you say his name. Um, so here's another one. Another one that, that is more evidence uh, for a commodity bull market. It says, the above chart also shows a secular rhythm in terms of the duration and magnitude of the above-mentioned pair trades. Once they get going, the trend tends to persist as the chart below suggests. So this is commodities versus stocks, uh, 2020, 99, 61, and 1930. These were the also other times that the ratios had bottomed for commodity to stocks. And this is where we are coming on up. Uh, and this is your compound annual growth rate versus your time frame on the bottom. So you can see that we all declined. They roughly bottomed in the general area, and then they start to go on up. This is the same for U.S. versus or ex-U.S. versus U.S. equities coming on up. We've got value versus growth. This is where value starts to outperform. That's what the dark line of 2020 is. These are 99 and 61. And then we've got small versus large and how that has moved along as well. So, um, yeah, I think commodities are coming, just like we think. Another one, it says the markets may be primed or for a significant style rotation. So this is a secular rotation. Secular means big, long-term, secular uh, change. 
So secular rotation at the top, we've got the five-year CAPE ratio. The CAPE ratio is the price to earnings ratio is, is what that is. The inflation is the 10-year compound annual growth rate. So the compound annual growth rate, you can see how this thing goes up and down, and it mirrors the five-year CAPE ratio. Notice how they are the same. What that is telling us is that inflation, and more than likely the inflation drives interest rates, the interest rates is what's driving the valuation of stocks. And that's the correlation. This guy does a very good job of correlating this. Now, if you look down here, we've got small, large, 10-year, uh, all compound annual growth rates. Value growth, X, so basically foreign US versus US, and then the CRB index. And these all correlate up and down based off of the inverse of that inflation 10-year annual growth rate. And then you can see that the cycle or this rotation takes about three decades, three decades, three decades to repeat and continue. If you look at the cycle here from 1933 to 1960, which is about three decades, you go from low to high to low again, low to high to low again, low to high to low again. And at 2020 was our low. Um, that's where I noticed and where I thought we were hitting a very long-term secular bottom for commodities. Over the next 10 or 15 years, which is half of this three decades or so, if you look 93 to 2009, uh, well, actually that's, that's, that's a pretty, pretty big run there. That's almost 20 years. Uh, 17 or uh, not 17, 14 years, 16, 17 years. Yeah, 17 years. What am I saying? 16 years. Jesus. 16 years higher from 93 to 2009. If we do 16 years, that could be 20, mid 2030s, potentially, uh, if it were to repeat, repeat like that. But um, that's what we've got ahead of us, guys. It's, it's a long secular bull market. Uh, so don't get afraid with the short-term movements in the market. You have to have a mindset that's a bull market on a long-term time frame. And then you just got to let it go. You got to let it go. You accumulate assets when they're cheap and then just let it go. Let it, let it sit in there for years. Um, this is going to be a big rotation of money. The secular rotation that he's got completely agree. And it's money rotating from certain sectors into other sectors based off of inflation and interest rates. That's what's causing that rotation. And the demographic is the driver of some of that. So coming on down to, I don't know why it put kicked me over that way. We're coming on down. We'll go through that. Uh, Jenny says, the energy transition has a Chilean copper problem. Cadelco's production is down by about a fifth from only six years ago. After a double-digit percentage drop in 2022, it's expected to fall as much as 7% this year to 1.35 million metric tons. It's a big problem. We are going to have a problem on the supply side of many commodities. Uh, and that's what you have to focus on if you want to be a long-term investor. You focus on these fundamentals. You focus on the supply side of it. If the supply side is messed up, you can have tempor temporary drawdowns in the overall markets based off of uh, demand destruction. But I think we're going to cycle between demand destruction, printing of money, and then a, a move to the upside. The supply side is so messed up on a lot of these commodities, the commodity bull market is going to come no matter what. It's just the timing of it. When exactly will we bottom? Uh, from this wave two, we'll find out. The IEA says oil price downturn ignores looming supply crunch. There's your fundamentals. It says weeks of declining oil prices due to concerns over a possible recession clash with the outlook for scarce supply and robust demand in the year in the later years. Here is the wealth data. It says. <coughs> 
Big reason we're investing money for our kids is because of where real estate prices will be in 20 years. With 5% annual growth rate, the median home price will be $1 million in 20 years. Real estate eventually will be a privilege only afforded to those with massive family help. That is an opinion. Uh, and maybe he's maybe he's nuts on. Maybe, maybe he's right. And I, I think that home prices will continue higher. I think we're going to continue to have inflation by the design of the system. And maybe he's maybe he's right. Now, here's another guy, uh, Kieran, I think is how you pronounce his name. It says short oil positioning getting extreme. Oil hedge fund CTAs are now massively net short gas oil futures. In the last five years, managed money has been net short only three other times. Late 2018, COVID 2020, late 2020. A big oil rally followed every case. Right here, right here, right here. And look at where we are today, guys. This is a far extreme. So it might be good to be a contrarian if everyone is short oil, and this is generally where things bottom out at and reverse rapidly, this might be an opportunity uh, to get long in oil. Now, that's not a recommendation. That's just taking a contrarian view and sharing my opinion of what I am doing. Um, but every time, big rallies have uh, occurred afterwards. Now this is this was crazy, guys. I was looking at this. It says the treas the Treasury general account is down 87 billion. There's 12 billionaires with a net worth higher than that. I didn't realize that this guy's net worth was 204 billion. Same with Elon at 166. I didn't realize they were that high. I thought they were like at 100 billion. But these guys got a lot of money, man. They got a lot of money. Uh, so it's according to the IEA, OECD oil inventory showed a deficit for quarter one. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought this de demand destruction. What, what, what's going on here? We have an oil deficit. Look at our inventory levels, guys. They're dropping. We'll see where this goes. Now, if we get the, the supply deficits that people are talking about, this thing is going to fall off a cliff when we get on, on the back half uh, of this. Other people will say it won't fall off a cliff because prices will, would have gone up rapidly before it. So let's find out. Let's see what happens uh, and, and, and see what's going on. It says gold is a safe haven and copper is an industrial metal that usually does well in good economic conditions. Dr. Copper. Look what happened during the inflationary 70s. The ratio now has a pink reversal pattern with a breakout in place. So this is gold versus copper. It's a ratio chart. This is the 1970s with a gigantic move where, copper, where gold outperformed copper during that time frame. Think of it as a stagflationary environment. Right now, we've got copper going down. Uh, gold has been holding somewhat of its own. Shoulder head, shoulder, and we're breaking out of the double pink or double bottom breakout of this pink line to the upside. Then we need to break the, the neckline for the big move to the upside, in this ratio at least. Um, again, it, it's looking positive for that type of environment where gold and silver can outperform. Contrast between universally awful sentiment versus fundamentals that a while good today are about to be meaningfully improved in the next month. Recessionary fear is killing conviction and preventing most from seeing what is what they see is coming. Uh, don't let price set the narrative. This is a reminder. I mentioned yesterday in the Altius video that our data looks like 2024 will be an up year for home prices. Ooh, up year, boys. Same with this. Zillow revised in its home price outlook upward again. <laughs> so between April of 2023 and 24, Zillow expects US home values as measured by that, to rise 4.8%. I thought we were in a bubble, guys. What's going on? How come these guys are coming out saying that home prices are going higher? It's a three-year bullish expanding wedge, gold versus USD in time, and we're right up against that resistance line. we got to break this bad boy here, guys. we got to break it. And the last one here is just 16% of the nation's 200 largest housing markets saw seasonally adjusted month-over-month 
Home price decline in April of 2023, so just 16%. At the height of the housing correction, 79% of the markets posted a month-over-month price decline in September of 2022. Just an FYI. Uh, But that's what we've got for today, guys. That's what we've got. Uh, Housing market doesn't look too bad, it seems like. Seems like it's holding on. Inventories are low. And the bigger picture view of commodities and the secular, we'll call it the secular uh, change, is unchanged. Everything looks good. But we do have short-term weakness in the markets. And that happens. It happens in big secular bull markets. You get cyclical pullbacks in secular bull markets. But that's what we've got for today. Give me a thumb up for the content. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the website if you'd like. Love to have you in our community. Uh, We do have a platinum question and answer session at 5 p.m. Sunday. Uh, We'll see you there. Ask your questions. 